In this video, we're going to talk about site navigation, essentially how to build out your pages and your blog posts in a way that is positive for your search engine optimization, um, for your uh, things like on, on, if you have a, a one of my websites for the showcase tables, how they work, you're going to want to think about site navigation for um, for your users and your menus and, and things like that. So I'm going to talk about how I set it up. And there are other ways. Um, one, it, you can build an entire website through blog posts only and have, you know, just a few pages like your contact us page or, you know, your main few pages. You could build an entire uh, website out of strictly pages and not posts. Um, but I'm going to show you on a WordPress website what I prefer and a little bit of what the differences are. Okay. Now, right here, we're looking at my real estate agent website. This is my brew. And I wanted to kind of show you from a, a visual standpoint. And then we're going to look at the back end of the of the blog of the website so that you can kind of get a little better idea of how those kind of things match up. Okay. So let me go back here first. Let's look at the home page. Okay. The very, very top tier, the absolute highest place you can go is actually your home page. Um, your default top level domain is the highest level that you can go. Okay, so I'm going to open a um, WordPress, uh, I mean, a, a document here at the same time. And we're actually going to look at, the, I'm going to build this document as we go. And um, what we can see here is, oops, I dropped it. There we go. Um, the top level domain, top level domain or your homepage typically. I mean, there are ways to set a different page as your home page, but you're, you're ju if you're just using your straight regular, it should like, look like mine where right here it just says ballinvegas.com and it has the home page. Okay, so top level domain is the top tier. Top level domain is top tier, usually home page. So that everything we're going to build now, we're going to build under this underneath it. Okay. So let's go ahead and add, um, bullet points. We're going to kind of make this look like we would look with an outline. Okay. So top level. Now let's look at my website again. And the next level should be, uh, we're, when we're talking about a real estate website specifically, your next level should be where you serve. What is your service area? So this is going to be the child page of the parent page, which is your top level domain. So this next one is going to be your locations. Now you can call these whatever you want. This does not need to be, let me make this bigger. This does not need to be the same names as mine. You just have to learn the concepts. Okay. And there's going to be other pages that are built sideways, but I just want to talk, talk to you about this one particular thing. In fact, we're going to use community pages as an example or zip code pages as an example. Okay. So your top level domain is your, is your top tier. Underneath that, you're going to have locations. So in my case, I serve Boulder City, Henderson, North Las Vegas, and Las Vegas. Oh, that needs to be renamed. Um, and then here, we need to have a, oh, this is actually a great opportunity to, well, I'll come back to it. We should have some content here and have a map. I just built out these pages. So, um, but I want to show you how the tiers go. So don't worry so much about what's on the page, but it would be nice to have a little thing right here about Boulder city and a little thing about North Las Vegas and a little thing about Las Vegas and then a link to the homes on those pages. Okay. Um, in this case, this is really kind of a placeholder page because what happens is typically people don't go to your home page and then click over to your city, cities you serve, and then click down to these, and then click down to the next tab. Typically, they're finding these interior pages through a link that you shared on Facebook or some other social network 
a paid ad or they did a search organically for something like homes for sale in 89134. And they land on the interior page. They never even see the menu. They never even see the home page. So most of these pages are not even in a menu that somebody would just grab. They're there and you're sending people there directly through these other channels. Now, once they're here, you want to give them ways to navigate, which is why I love these tables on the top of every page and why I love this search widget on every page because you're immediately giving them places to go and giving them options. Okay, so get it out of your head that all these thousands of pages or hundreds of pages, whatever you have, have to be in a menu somewhere because that isn't normally how people are finding it. They'll navigate once they get in, but they're typically not just going to a home page and starting to navigate, okay? If they are, that's okay. As long as your structure is set up right, they'll be able to navigate from there. All right, so now let's just take... Um, I built this community page 89134 this morning. This is a zip code page. So I built this out. Let's just say we're looking at how we were building that navigation, right? So next, underneath locations, we need to have Las Vegas. Um, there we go. Las Vegas. Okay, so you see now, Las Vegas is a sub page or child page of locations, which is a child page of the of the top level domain. So if you look here in my domain, you can see this ballandvegas.com slash locations. That was that top that's this one here now. Now watch what happens when I click Las Vegas. It switches over to Ballon Vegas top level, locations is the second one, and Las Vegas is the third one. So you see how these slugs, those are the keywords after the slash, coordinate with our hierarchy here perfectly. Okay? Now what happens is, as you're building these, when you have good ranking pages, and they're linking back up to these top tier pages, which there's lots of ways to do that. Mine do it automatically here through my um, dynamic tables on my real estate website that I have on the brew. When you're linking back, the, that link juice passes up. The link equity flows. And so you're actually benefiting the other pages. You can get a really good category on your blog post to rank well. The pages within that category are probably going to benefit as well. So there is some best practices in building this hierarchy strategically so that you're passing that positive link equity to the other pages. Okay. Also this, when you build it like this, you're creating a site map. You're telling Google and the other search engines what, how these pages relate to each other. So when your posts are in the same category or your child pages, you have child pages of a parent page, Google is seeing the relation between them. So it's very, very positive for your search engine rankings to have this hierarchy done strategically, okay? Now, in your market, you, you might have a, another category under locations, you might have counties, and then you might have cities. I only have one major county that I serve, so I don't have that issue, okay? Um, or your cities, and you, it's, you know, it's really tricky when your cities cross over into multiple counties, so then you might have either multiple city pages or you might have to choose which county they go under, so that gets really tricky. You're going to have to choose for your area. You might be in a place like Louisiana that has townships or, or has par parishes, so However it is in your area, what you have to get in your head is, how do I build top level down? What's top level? If people in your market don't search by county, you don't need it then. But if they call things by county and not by city, then build everything by county. You need to think how your market is and how people search there and how people would understand areas there. Your top level might purely be top level domain and neighborhoods. 
because maybe you don't have multiple cities. Maybe you don't have multiple counties. Maybe you don't have multiple zip codes. All you have is neighborhoods. So you might go straight to neighborhoods. That's okay too. So let's go back to mine. So mine's going to look like this. Okay. Then underneath cities, I'm going to have zip codes. In addition, alongside zip codes, I'm going to have school zones. Because in my market, school, people search by homes for sale around a particular school. Those schools cross many zip codes, and those zip codes cross many school zones, but they're all under in the same city. So it makes sense to have them there. Okay. Underneath cities, I'm also going to have something called areas. And in my case, this is like um, Northwest Las Vegas, East Las Vegas, North, you know, North, um, South, Southwest. And because these all cross each other, that's why they're sideways to each other. One doesn't fit underneath the other. They all cross each other. So these are all going to be parallel, but they're all going to go under that city page. Okay. Now under that zip code page, I'm going to have homes for sale in 89134 under 300. Okay. Homes for sale by price. Homes for sale by feature. So this would be like homes for sale in 89134 with a pool. Homes for sale in 89134 with a basement. Okay, so the underneath the zip codes, I'm gonna have I'm gonna cover them like that. I'm gonna do the same thing with school zones. Homes for sale by price. Homes for sale by feature. And if you have a brew, a Ballon Real Estate website, and you're building out your showcase pages, you might, you're going to be even drilling down further. Underneath homes for sale by price, you'll have homes for sale by price plus feature. Or homes for sale by feature plus price. So that you have your have all those um, options up there on your showcase tables. But we'll get into those separately under um, under showcase tables. But your page hierarchy won't change. That what'll only in fact, I almost want to tell you forget what I just said, but don't. Um, your page hierarchy won't change. You'll just change your little showcase tables up there on the on the side. But you'll probably still keep your. Well, you may, you may in some cases, but these are the main idea: location, top level, location, city, zip code, school zones, areas. Um, I might, I also have under cities, I have um, homes by style. So this is going to be like condos, townhomes, multifamily, um, lofts, high, well, actually lofts and high rises go under condo. So watch this. So now condos has a child page. High rises and lofts. You see where I'm going with that? So these are actually all parallel to each other, and then we build under each one of them. I just want to give you examples here. And then again, underneath here would be another child page, Northwest. Homes in Northwest by price. Homes in Northwest by style or by um, feature, okay? And then I'm, let's see, so going back to the website here, 
I have homes by price. I've got them sorted by numbers of bedrooms, areas, community, energy description, feature, golf homes. I've got all kinds of things underneath, underneath um, the city page. So you can fill it out as little or as far as you want to go. If you wanted to, you could simply stop at top level, locations, cities, zip codes, price feature, school zone, price feature, area, price feature. Okay, and then you don't have to go any further than that if you want to. And in fact, when you're first starting to build, you want to build all your top levels anyway. It's, high, it's top level first, then build. So first, get your main page done, get your locations, get your areas, and then start on one. Zip codes. Do all your zip codes. So again, if you look at my zip codes, they look like this. We'll go back to browse by zip code. So the person underneath zip code, I actually have the area of town where those zip codes go. I forgot about that. Um, so in my case, underneath zip codes, I actually have um, zip code area. And then I have the actual zip codes. You don't have to do that. That was I decided to do that because people in my market were really looking up northwest, southwest, southeast, and so I wanted to have the zip codes as part of that. Then they click on one of those, and underneath northwest is all the northwest zip codes. So in my case, zip code area, zip codes, list, and then technically I now have zip code and then homes by price whoops how do i there we go goes under each zip code so look how many child pages the homes by price is a child page of zip code which is a child page of the um the zip code it's technically not a child page zip code is a child page of zip code area so look if you look at the url it looks like this so top level domain, child page locations, child page is Las Vegas, child page is zip codes, then area, and then the actual zip code itself. So I had that a little bit backwards. So it is zip codes first. So it's zip codes, zip code area, and then zip code itself. And then I have the homes for price underneath the zip code itself. And I'll show you that again. If I now if I go to homes for sale under 400,000, you can see up here a change again. Top level is the main domain. Child is locations. Child of that is Las Vegas. Child of that is the zip codes. Child of that is the area of the zip codes. Child of that is the actual zip code. Child of that is the homes for sale by price in that zip code. Okay. So that is the overall hierarchy structure when I'm building out my community pages. You don't have to worry about it being exactly like mine or perfect. Just focus on top level down is the main thing because you can't build up later. That's where it's going to get tricky for you is trying to go back in and build up. So if I built this page down here, townhomes in, Los, townhomes in the Northwest, and I didn't put it up here, I didn't build a placeholder for Northwest, I can't then later go in and build a top level page called Northwest without removing that page or building a new page and doing a redirect. So I shouldn't say it can't be done. It can be done. It's just going to be really tricky. Once you get there, you have to do a lot of redirects and a lot of fancy dancing and stuff. So it's much easier to build it this way first. Okay. Let me save this in case we want to put this in here. Um, community page structure, website structure. Okay, um, now I'll show you really quick as far as the blog posts go. I'll just do a new page here so we can do the same thing. Okay, so blog posts you really want to get good with your categories. Okay, so blog, blog posts. The major difference um, 
blog post website structure. Save this. The biggest difference it, between a blog post and a web page, they're actually the same in the eyes of the search engines. They're, it's a page. They're all web pages. The biggest difference is your site structure and the functionality of what kind of tools and things you use and how they pull in blog posts versus pages. So for example, you might have a, a something set up on Zapier, which is that if this, then that formula creator. So you might have a, a Zap set up that says, if I create a blog post, then feed to this Facebook channel and this Google and this, 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 and this. So then if you created pages, they wouldn't syndicate out. They wouldn't publish out only your blog post would. Another example might be using something like Ultimate Short Codes where I have the ability to add related articles. I can add related pages. I can add related posts. So I kind of like to have in my head what are my pages and what are my posts so that I always know how to go and how to grab those and how to include those. So posts for me are typically articles, everyday articles, how to do this, the real estate market, staging your home, finding the best home inspector, those types of things and anything that would expire time-wise. So a featured listing, um, open houses, special events, information about the real estate market that you know that's gonna change all the time. Those are gonna be posts for me. My pages are gonna be my homes for sale pages, all of my IDX pages, all of my community pages, um, and of course my about page, my home value offer page, contact us, um, testimonial page, kind of like those anchor pages. Everything else typically is our blog posts on my website. Anything article related is definitely going to be a blog post, okay? But it doesn't have to be. But I do like how they work under the category structure. So if you were to start a basic blog post, a, a basic blog tomorrow, let's say you don't have one, this is what I would suggest for a real estate, a real estate website. That you have a, a category called buying a house buying a house, or it could be buying a house in, and you have your main area. But if you cover a lot of areas, just do buying a house, okay? And then um, underneath, so that's a, that is a category. Um, where's my bullet points there? They are. No. Okay, let's go look real quick at my blog site so we can follow along. If I go to new blog post, um, on the right hand side, here's all my blog categories. And as you can see, I have parent categories and child categories. Just like if we were to do a new page, I didn't show you on the back end, over here, here's all of my pages. And when they're indented, they're child pages. So you're able to see the parent pages and child pages. So for example, here's Las Ve living in Las Vegas. Um, oh, these are my regular pages. Showcase pages, showcase pages, if you have a brew, are actually the neighborhood pages. And they look like this. So now you can see I have Henderson Schools, then I have all the child pages. Here's... Um, let me go down to something like Green Valley. This is a neighborhood. It's underneath Henderson, which is underneath locations. And then underneath Green Valley, I have five bedroom homes. I have neighborhoods. So you can see lots of that in action. Parent page, 891044. Child pages are all the prices. And I'm still building these out aggressively because we just launched this in August. Okay, now on blogs, instead you have categories. So just like parent pages, you just have categories. That's all you have to remember is a, a parent page and a child page, category and a post. Parent page and a child page are pages on blogs, cate or category and post is all you have to worry about. But you can have a category that is a child page of a, of a, of a, of a um, parent. It looks like this. Add a new category. I might have investing. And then I'm going to put that underneath buying a house in Las Vegas or home buying. You see how that works? So more niche focus. So the, so the top structure is buying a house. 
Underneath that, I'm going to have investing. I'm going to have um, if maybe like if historic homes or if your category, you should only have a category on its own if you're going to build multiple posts in that category. If you're only going to have one blog post ever on how to buy a historic home, just put that as a regular post in the buying a house category. It doesn't need its own category. But if you're going to be doing a ton of articles on investing in a home, it should be its own category. If you're going to do a ton of articles for first time home buyers or for military buyers, then, they, then you want to have your own category. Okay. So your next one I would do is um, selling a house. And you only want to have categories in here if you're going to be writing a ton on one particular topic like selling a house short sale. Back in 2007, I, I wrote, 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 wrote on short sales. So I needed its own category. Okay. And then down here, and you can move these later, but if your site structure includes that permalink up here, you'll be doing redirects just like you would with pages. If it doesn't, then you can move your categories around it however you want to later. No big deal. But it, mine does not on my blog. But if your if your blog includes a permalink structure that includes the parent the category in the permalink, then you'll have to do redirects, and you can study my lesson on redirects. All possible, but a real pain to do later. Okay. So then I, I'm going to do one category. I'm going to do hyper local. So I'm going to do living in Las Vegas, and that's going to be its own. And then I'm going to do um, living in um, best of and that's funny. I always forget. What's the other one? There's three. I've been making too many videos today. I'm forgetting stuff. Okay. Underneath living in, you're going to have things like the tramp. Um, you'll have it'll you won't have other categories underneath it but you'll have posts like transportation living in las vegas the weather living in las vegas the jobs living in las vegas the school system but they'll all go under this category but those would be individual posts on your best of oh i know what the third one was things to do best of You'll have things like best. Um, this one might actually have multiple categories. So, for example, food. I have a lot on food. So I started with best restaurants. And then all of a sudden, I found myself writing a bunch. So I started doing best buffets, best pizza, best sushi. And so those all go under the subcategory restaurants of best of. And you might have best of the shows best of um, uh, places to work, best of um, shopping malls. And those you can do best of according to reviews. You can do your own best of list. You can do your own study, send out a questionnaire, Facebook group, whatever. Things to do. So under things to do, you're going to have posts that say things like things to do for free, on a date, for Christmas. So all of your hyper-local things to do go under that category. So essentially, your blog post, your categories are things that you're going to write multiple blog posts on uh, that are going to fall under that category. It's okay to move them later, but you may have to do a redirect if your category is part of your permalink structure. Okay, so it's okay if you mess up. You can probably fix it later. Um, again, watch my, especially if you have Yoast. If you have Yoast, redirects are super, super easy if you have the WordPress plugin Yoast. Um, and so basically that's your lesson today on how to build your website structure for your um, uh, real estate pages and your blog posts and articles.